Based on real events, the film begins in 1954. The main character, Ray Kroc, attempts to sell a multi-mixer for simultaneously preparing five milkshakes to the owner of a diner. After being rejected, he drags the device into the trunk of his car, where he awaits a previously ordered lunch. The diner's staff struggles to cope with the influx of orders. At the next location, he faces another refusal. In the evening, he talks to his wife on the phone from a hotel room, then listens to an audiobook on self-hypnosis, stating that a successful businessman must be persistent. After another failure, he calls his secretary, June Martino. She informs him that some cafe owners from California have ordered six multi-mixers. Surprised by the volume, Ray calls the provided number to confirm if the owner made a mistake. Amidst the noise of the busy kitchen, Dick McDonald confesses that he made a mistake. He actually needs eight mixers. Intrigued by the sudden success, Ray looks at the map to find his way to California. He embarks on a journey to personally see the person who agreed to buy such a quantity. Upon arrival, the protagonist notices a massive queue outside the diner, but the woman in front of him assures that the service here is very fast. When his turn comes, he places an order and almost immediately receives his portion. Ray, accustomed to long hours of service in such establishments, is amazed at the speed and the absence of dishes. Hamburgers are wrapped in disposable paper packaging. He sits on a nearby bench to eat and notices a man sweeping away the visitor's trash. It turns out to be Mac McDonald, co-owner of the restaurant. Ray introduces himself and expresses admiration for the efficient operation, after which Mac arranges a tour of the kitchen. Inside, Mac demonstrates the cooking process. Hamburgers are prepared in batches thanks to their handcrafted technology. Cooking is continuous and fast, so customers don't have to wait long. Ray also meets Mac's brother, Dick, who is extremely busy overseeing quality control, leaving him no time to chat with the guest. Impressed, Ray invites the brothers to dinner to hear their story. In the evening, they recount that they had been striving for success for a long time, but the initial plans did not bring the expected profits. After working as drivers, they saved up to open a movie theater, but it soon went bankrupt due to the Great Depression. Drawing conclusions from the success of the hot dog stand, the brothers decided to open their own diner. People always want to eat, even during an economic crisis. They opened their first drive-in in Arcadia and later moved to San Bernardino, even having to dismantle a building to pass under a bridge. At the new Lokchen, after the opening, everything went well initially, but soon sales declined due to teenagers occupying the parking lots and waitresses flirting for tips, which significantly slowed down the service. Realizing that the main sales came from three items, hamburgers, drinks, and French fries, the brothers reduced the menu options and removed cigarette vending machines, switching to paper packaging. However, this was not enough. The McDonald's sought to reduce order waiting times and increase customer flow. To plan the kitchen, they drew plans on a tennis court map while employees pretended to work. Through trial and error, Dick identified the optimal layout. The revolutionary ideas almost failed on the opening day when visitors waited at their cars for waitresses. Mac had to personally invite them to the order window. Many rejected the innovative approach and left. Not even a grand evening presentation helped, as a hailstorm scared away all visitors. Accepting the failure, the brothers contemplated how to return to the old format when a little boy knocked on the window. Mac made free burgers for him as the last customer, but soon more visitors approached the establishment. They told friends about the diner, and soon there were queues outside the first McDonald's. Unable to sleep, Ray returned to bed at night. In the morning, he meets the brothers in the parking lot and suggests expanding by opening a franchise. Ray reads an inspired speech that breaks down into a weighty argument. The brothers had already tried. They opened a couple of points in other cities, but it was problematic to monitor the quality of products and employee performance there. Due to stress, Mac even ended up in the hospital. Ray also notices a concept photo for the diner building, based on which they built a location in Phoenix. The protagonist goes there to see it with his own eyes. The closed establishment, shining in the night with a golden color, captivates him. He stands in front of it, admiring, and then returns home. Ray tells his wife about the brothers and their new business idea, but she recommends not investing in the new venture. Croc returns to work, observing small towns across the country during his travels. However, after another rejection, he decides to give it one more try. He convinces the brothers that the McDonald's franchise could become a symbol of America, like churches and flags, uniting the nation around food and promoting family values. Mac convinces Dick to agree, and soon they sign a contract with Ray. While the brothers work at their location, he will handle the promotion of the franchise across the country. Ray travels to banks to get money, but bankers recognize him from past visits and refuse. 
he has to mortgage his home to get the money and start the construction of the first McDonald's. However, the brothers are slowing down the process a bit because Ray wants to build the coffee shop on a foundation, and any changes need to be approved by Dick. They also reject the idea of advertising partnership with Coca-Cola, which angers Ray. Despite all the setbacks, soon in Des Plaines, the first McDonald's is opened. Ray personally monitors the work of employees to meet high standards. He also notices the skilled chef Fred Turner. In the evenings, Ray, like Mac, personally cleans the area around the coffee shop. Later, he shares his idea with his friends at the local club. While playing golf, he convinces them to invest in the franchise and open their own locations. However, when he visits them personally, he sees that there is no quality control. The menu includes various dishes, the area is dirty, unsanitary, and the food quality is terrible. In anger, he expresses his complaints to his business partners, but they don't care about his concerns. This failure forces Ray to reconsider the development strategy. He notices the struggling Dave Kemeny and offers him to invest in the next location. Dave accepts the hero's offer and opens a diner with his wife, who hands out candies to children during the opening. This inspires Ray, whose wife doesn't support his venture too much. In addition, the fast food chain is positioned as a family-friendly diner, adding extra charm to the couple. Ray and his wife visit a diner where they interact with the middle class, especially with the wives. He persuades them to join the McDonald's franchise. This policy bears fruit. Traveling across the country, Ray recruits new managers who open their diners and pay him and the brothers a percentage of the profit. At this time, the brothers learn that people refer to the Des Plaines location as the first McDonald's, which they don't like. At the opening of Ray's next location, he is greeted by an enthusiastic crowd. Later, at dinner with investors, he meets the owner of a restaurant who also wants to invest in the fast food chain. The businessman's wife, Juanita, catches the attention of his new colleague, Juan. He even plays a song with her on the piano. Upon returning home, he boasts to his wife that now investors are seeking meetings with him. However, soon a financial problem arises. The royalties due to him according to the contract are not enough to cover expenses. Ray calls Dick to improve the terms, but the brothers refuse. In addition, due to a credit default, the bank wants to take away his house, which the wife finds out about. After a dispute with the bankers, the man visits Juanita's restaurant. Later, they meet for dinner together. The woman suggests switching to powdered milkshake extract, which will save on freezing and energy for the refrigerators where they are stored. Juanita treats Ray to a separated shake, and he agrees that it's a great idea. His interest in the woman, who shares his ideals, continues to grow. However, Dick categorically refuses to switch to powdered shakes. Ray asks the banker for another loan, but is denied. However, his speech is overheard by Harry Sonneborn, a financial consultant. He offers his assistance to the businessman. After reviewing the contract, Harry suggests engaging in real estate acquisition, where the McDonald's stands. By leasing them, Ray can generate profit regardless of the brothers' decisions. For this, he organizes a new corporation, which Dick doesn't particularly like. Nevertheless, the hero stands his ground, formally not violating the terms of the current contract. In addition, the restaurant chain is growing. Ray is interviewed, and his photos adorn magazine covers. But soon, he decides to heed Dick's advice and switch all locations to powdered milkshakes for cost savings. He personally delivers the first batch to Juanita. Later that night, they discuss expansion prospects over the phone, while Ray's wife pretends to be sleeping in an empty bed. Dick knows that the businessman approved powdered shakes and expresses his disagreement. He threatens with a lawsuit, but Ray refuses to comply. His current financial situation allows him to drown opponents in legal costs and simply bankrupt them. Later, during dinner with his wife, eating vegetables, the hero confesses that he wants a divorce. However, during the asset division, he refuses to give her even one share of the company. Later, he sends Dick a new powdered extract with a letter featuring a caricature of a whole McDonald's type. The brothers scold him over the phone, and due to stress, Mac collapses unconscious. Later, Ray visits him in the hospital and offers an empty check as payment for their share of the business. They are free to write any amount. After thinking for a while, the brothers agree to the deal, as competing with the giant company is not in their favor. Among the conditions, they not only receive a one-time payment, but also retain the right to keep their potato and receive perpetual 1% profits. Initially, Ray disagrees, but lawyers convince him to compromise. At the same time, he insists that the deal regarding the 1% profit payment will be verbal and sealed with a handshake. This is done so that bankers, when granting loans, do not pay attention to an additional problematic point. Reluctantly, the brothers decide to compromise, despite being deceived by him in the past. Later, in the restroom, 
the hero confesses to Dick that all the success is not only based on their kitchen innovations, but also on the McDonald's name, which sounds very American. Lawyers force them to remove the right to use surnames in the restaurant's name, partially dismantling the sign. At this time, a full-fledged official McDonald's is being built right across the street, the hundredth in line. Ray cuts the red ribbon, nostalgically and self-satisfied, looking at the building where it all began. The story moves to the year 1970. Ray Kroc rehearses a speech in front of a mirror at his mansion for a meeting with California Senator Ronald Reagan, the future president of the country. His current wife, Juanita, observes him. In the final scene, archival recordings of a real interview with Ray Kroc are played, where he talks about realizing that McDonald's would become a cultural heritage of America. 